Book 2, Canto 3 The Glory and the Fall of Life An uneven, broad ascent now lured his feet Answering a greater nature's troubled call, he crossed the limits of embodied mind and entered wide, obscure, disputed fields where all was doubt and change and nothing sure, a world of search and toil without repose. As one who meets the face of the unknown, a questioner with none to give reply, attracted to a problem never solved, always uncertain of the ground he trod, always drawn on to an inconstant goal. He travelled through a land peopled by doubts in shifting confines on a quaking base. In front he saw a boundary ever unreached and thought himself at each step nearer now, a far retreating horizon of mirage, a vagrancy was there that brooked no home, a journey of countless paths without a close, nothing he found to satisfy his heart, a tireless wandering sought and could not cease. Their life is a manifest incalculable, a movement of unquiet seas, a long and venturous leap of spirit into space, a vexed disturbance in the eternal calm an impulse and passion of the infinite. Assuming whatever shape her fancy wills, escaped from the restraint of settled forms, she has left the safety of the tried and known. Unshepherded by the fear that walks through time, Undaunted by fate that dogs and chance that springs, she accepts disaster as a common risk. Careless of suffering, heedless of sin and fall, she wrestles with danger and discovery in the unexplored expanses of the soul. To be seemed only a long experiment, the hazard of a seeking ignorant force that tries all truths and finding none supreme, moves on unsatisfied, unsure of its end. As saw some inner mind, so life was shaped. From thought to thought she passed from face to face, tortured by her own powers, or proud and blessed, now master of herself, now toy and slave. A huge inconsequence was her action's law, as if all possibility must be drained, and anguish and bliss were pastimes of the heart. In a gallop of thunder-hooved vicissitudes, she swept through the race fields of circumstance, or swaying she tossed between her heights and deeps, uplifted or broken on time's inconstant wheel. Amid a tedious crawl of drab desires, she writhed, a worm mid worms in nature's mud, then tightened, statured, 
took all earth for food, ambitioned the seas for robe, for crown the stars, and shouting strode from peak to giant peak, clamoring for worlds to conquer and to rule. Then wantonly enamored of sorrow's face, she plunged into the anguish of the depths and wallowing clung to her own misery. In dolorous converse with her squandered self, she wrote the account of all that she had lost or sat with grief as with an ancient friend. A romp of violent rapture soon was spent, for she lingered tied to an inadequate joy, missing the turns of fate, missing life's goal. A scene was planned for all her numberless moods, where each could be the law and way of life, but none could offer a pure felicity. Only a flickering zest they left behind, or the fierce lust that brings a dead fatigue. Amid her swift, untold variety, something remained dissatisfied, ever the same, and in the new saw only a face of the old. For every hour repeated all the rest, and every change prolonged the same unease. A spirit of herself and aim unsure, tired soon of too much joy and happiness, she needs the spur of pleasure and of pain and the native taste of suffering and unrest. She strains for an end that never can she win. A perverse ever haunts her thirsting lips for the grief she weeps which came from her own choice for the pleasure yearns that racked which wounds her breast. Aspiring to heaven, she turns her steps towards hell. Chance she has chosen and danger for playfellows. Fate's dreadful swing she has taken for cradle and seat. Yet pure and bright from the timeless was her birth. A lost world rapture lingers in her eyes. Her moods are faces of the infinite. Beauty and happiness are her native right, and endless bliss is her eternal home. This now revealed its antique face of joy, a sudden disclosure to the heart of grief, tempting it to endure and long and hope. Even in changing worlds bereft of peace, in an air wracked with sorrow and with fear, and while his feet trod on a soil unsafe, he saw the image of a happier state. In an architecture of hieratic space, circling and mounting towards creation stops at a blue height which never was too high for warm communion between body and soul, as far as heaven, as near as thought and hope, glimmered the kingdom of a griefless life. Above him, in a new celestial vault, other than the heavens beheld by mortal eyes, as on a fretted ceiling of the gods, an archipelago of laughter and fire swam stars apart in a rippled sea of sky. 
Towered spirals, magic rings of vivid hue, and gleaming spheres of strange felicity floated through distance like a symbol world. On the trouble and the toil they could not share, on the unhappiness they could not aid, impervious to life's suffering, struggle, grief, untarnished by its anger, gloom and hate, unmoved, untouched, looked down great visioned plains, blissful forever in their timeless light. Absorbed in their own beauty and content of their immortal gladness, they live sure. Apart in their self-glory, plunged, remote, burning, they swam in a vague, lucent haze, an everlasting refuge of dream light, a nebula of the splendors of the gods made from the musings of eternity. Almost unbelievable by human faith, hardly they seemed the stuff of things that are, as through a magic television's glass, outlined to some magnifying inner eye, they shone like images thrown from a far scene, too high and glad for mortal lids to seize, but near and real to the longing heart and to the body's passionate thought and sense are the hidden kingdoms of beatitude. In some close unattained realm which yet we feel immune from the harsh clutch of death and time, escaping the search of sorrow and desire in bright enchanted safe peripheries forever wallowing in bliss they lie. In dream and trance and muse before our eyes, across a subtle vision's inner field, wide rapturous landscapes fleeting from the sight, the figures of the perfect kingdom pass, and behind them leave a shining memory's trail. Imagine scenes of great eternal worlds, dream caught or sensed, they touch our hearts with their depths, unreal seeming, yet more real than life, happier than happiness, truer than things true, if dreams these were, or captured images, dreams truth made false earth's vain realities. In a swift eternal moment, fixed there live, or ever recalled, come back to longing eyes, calm heavens of imperishable light, illumined continents of violet peace, oceans and rivers of the mirth of God and griefless countries under purple suns. This once a star of bright remote idea or imagination's comet trail of dream took now a close shape of reality. The gulf between dream truth Earth fact was crossed. The wonder worlds of life were dreams no more. His vision made, all they unveiled its own. Their scenes, their happenings met his eyes and heart and smote them with pure loveliness and bliss. A breathless summit region drew his gaze, whose boundaries jutted into a sky of self and dipped towards a strange ethereal base. 
the quintessence glowed of life's supreme delight. On a spiritual and mysterious peak, only a miracle's high transfiguring line divided life from the formless infinite and sheltered time against eternity. Out of that formless stuff, time mints his shapes. The eternal's quiet holds the cosmic act. The protean images of the world force have drawn the strength to be, the will to last from a deep ocean of dynamic peace. Inverting the spirit's apex towards life, she spends the plastic liberties of the one to cast in act the dreams of her caprice. His wisdom's call steadies her careless feet. He props her dance upon a rigid base. His timeless still immutability must standardize her creation's miracle. Out of the void's unseeing energies, inventing the scene of a concrete universe, by thought she has fixed its paces. In its blind acts she sees by flashes of his all-knowing light. At her will the inscrutable supermind leans down to guide her force that feels but cannot know. Its breath of power controls her restless seas, and life obeys the governing idea. At her will, led by a luminous imminence, the hazardous experimenting mind pushes its way through obscure possibles, mid-chance formations of an unknowing world. Our human ignorance moves towards the truth that nescience may become omniscient. Transmuted instincts shape to divine thoughts, thoughts house infallible immortal sight, and nature climbs towards God's identity. The master of the world, self-made her slave, is the executor of her fantasies. She has canalized the seas of omnipotence. She has limited by her laws the limitable. The immortal bound himself to do her works. He labors at the tasks her ignorance sets, hidden in the cape of her mortality. The world, the form her goddess fancy makes, have lost their origin on unseen heights. Even severed, straying from their timeless source, even deformed, obscure, accursed and fallen, since even fall has its perverted joy and nothing she lives out that serves delight, these two can to the peaks revert or hear cut out the sentence of the spirit's fall, recover the forfeited divinity. At once caught in an eternal vision sweep, he saw her pride and splendor of high-born zones and her regions crouching in the nether deeps. Above was a monarchy of unfallen self Beneath was the gloomy trance of the abyss, an opposite pole or dim antipodes. There were vasts of the glory of life's absolutes, all laughed in a safe immortality and an eternal childhood of the soul, before darkness came and pain and grief were born where all could dare to be themselves and one, and wisdom played in sinless innocence, 
with naked freedom in truth happy sun there were worlds of her laughter and dreadful irony there were fields of her taste of toil and strife and tears her head lay on the breast of amorous death sleep imitated a while extinction speeds the light of god she has parted from his dark to test the sever of bare opposites here mingling in man's heart their tones and hues have woven his being's mutable design his life a forward rippling stream in time his nature's constant fixed mobility his soul a moving picture's changeful film his cosmos chaos of personality the grand creatrix with her cryptic touch has turned to pathos and power being self dream made a passion play of its fathomless mystery but here were world lifted half way to heaven the veil was there but not the shadowy wall in forms not too remote from human grasp some passion of the inviolate purity broke through a ray of the original bliss heaven's joys might have been earth if earth were pure they could have reached our divinized sense and heart some natural felicity bright extreme some thrill of super nature's absolute all strength could laugh and sport on earth's hard roads and never feel a cruel edge of pain all love could play and nowhere nature's shame but she has stabled her dreams in matter's court and still her doors are barred to things supreme these worlds could feel god's breath visiting their tops some glimmer of the transcendent hem was there across the white ionic silences immortal figures of embodied joy traverse the wide spaces near to eternity sleep pure mystic voices and beatitudes hush appeal to love's immaculate sweetnesses calling his honey touch to thrill the world his blissful hands to seize on nature's limbs his sweet intolerant might of union to take all beings into his savior arms drawing to his pity the rebel and the waif to force on them the happiness they refuse a chant hymeneal to the unseen divine a flaming rhapsody of white desire lured and immortal music into the heart and woke the slumbering ear of ecstasy a purer fierier sense had there its home a burning urge no earthly limbs can hold one drew a lord and burden spacious breath and the heart sped from beat to rapture beat the voice of time sang of the immortal joy an inspiration and a lyric cry the moments came with ecstasy on their wings beauty unimaginable moved heaven bare absolved from boundaries in the vast of dream the cry of the birds of wonder called from the skies to the deathless people of the shores of light creation leaped straight from the hands of god marvel and rapture 
wandered in the ways only to be was a supreme delight life was a happy laughter of the soul and joy was king with love for minister the spirit's luminousness was bodied there life's contraries were lovers or natural friends in our extremes keen edges of harmony indulgence with a tender purity came and nursed the god on her maternal breast there none was weak so falsehood could not live ignorance was a thin shade protecting light imagination the free will of truth pleasure a candidate for heaven's fire the intellect was beauty's worshipper strength was a slave of calm spiritual law power laid its head upon the breasts of bliss there were summit glories inconceivable autonomies of wisdom still self rule and high dependencies of a virgin sun still human theocracies of the seeing soul throne in the power of the transcendence ray the vision of grandeur a dream of magnitude in sun bright kingdoms moved with regal gait assemblies crowded senates of the gods life's puissances reigned on seats of marble will high dominations and autocracies and laureled strength and arm imperative might all objects there were great and beautiful all beings wore a royal stamp of power there sat the oligarchies of natural law proud violent heads served one calm monarch brow all the souls postures donned divinity they met the ardent mutual intimacies of mastery joy and the joy of servitude imposed by love on loved heart that obeys and loved body held beneath a rapturous yoke all was a game of meeting kinglinesses for worship lips the worshippers bowed strength close to the god's pride and bliss his soul adores the ruler there is one with all he rules to him who serves with a free equal heart obedience is his princely training school his nobility is coronet and privilege his faith is a high nature idiom his service a spiritual sovereignty there were realms where knowledge joined creative power in our high home and made her all his own the grand illuminate seized the gleaming limbs and filled them with the passion of his ray till all her body was its transparent house and all her soul a counterpart of his soul apotheosis transfigured by wisdom touch her days became a luminous sacrifice an immortal moth in happy and endless fire she burned in a sweet intolerable blaze a captive life wedded her conqueror in his wide sky she built her world a new she gave to minds calm pace the motor speed to thinking a need to live what the soul saw to living and impetus to know and see his splendor grasped her her puissance to him clung she crowned the idea a king in purple robes put her magic serpent scepter in thought's grip 
made forms, his inward visions, rhythmic shapes, and her acts the living body of his will. A flaming thunder, a creator flash, his victor light rode on her deathless force. A centaur's mighty gallop bore the god. Life throned with mine, a double majesty. Worlds were there of a happiness great and grave, and action tinged with dream, laughter with thought, and passion there could wait for its desire until it heard the near approach of God. Worlds were there of a childlike mirth and joy, a carefree youthfulness of mind and heart, found in the body a heavenly instrument. It lit an aureate halo round desire and freed the deified animal in the limbs to divine gambols of love and beauty and bliss. On a radiant soil that gazed at heaven's smile, a swift life impulse stinted not nor stopped. It knew not how to tire, happy were its tears. Their work was play, and play the only work. The tasks of heaven a game of godlike might, a celestial bacchanal forever pure, unstayed by faintness as in mortal frames. Life was an eternity of raptured moods. Age never came, care never lined the face, imposing on the safety of the stars, a race and laughter of immortal strength. The nude god-children in the play-fields ran, smiting the winds with splendor and with speed. Of storm and sun they made companions, sported with the white mane of tossing seas, slew distance, trampled to death under their wheels, and wrestled in the arena of their force. Imperious in their radiance, like the suns, they kindled heaven with the glory of their limbs, flung like a divine larger to the world. A spell to force the heart to stark delight, they carried the pride and mastery of their charm, as if life's banner on the roads of space. Ideas were luminous comrades of the soul. Mind played with speech, cast javelins of thought, but needed not these instruments toil to know. Knowledge was nature's pastime like the rest. Investitured with the fresh heart's bright ray, an early god instinct's child inheritor, tenants of the perpetuity of time, still thrilling with the first creation's bliss, they steeped existence in their youth of soul. An exquisite and vehement tyranny, the strong compulsion of their will to joy, poured smiling streams of happiness through the world. There reigned a breath of high immune content, a fortunate gate of days in tranquil air, a flood of universal love and peace. A sovereignty of tireless sweetness lived like a song of pleasure on the lips of time. A large, spontaneous order freed the will. A sun frank ringing of the soul to bliss, the breath and greatness of the unfettered act 
and the swift fire heart golden liberty there was no falsehood of soul severance there came no crookedness of thought or word to rob creation of its native truth all was sincerity and natural force their freedom was soul rule and highest law in a happy series climbed or plunged these worlds in realms of curious beauty and surprise in fields of grandeur and of titan power life played at ease with her immense desire a thousand edens she could build nor pause no bound was set to her greatness and to her grace and to her heavenly variety awake with a cry and stir of numberless souls arisen from the breast of some deep infinite smiling like a newborn child at love and hope in her nature housing the immortal power in a bosom bearing the eternal will no guide she needed but her luminous heart no fall debased the goddess of her steps no alien night had come to blind her eyes there was no use for grudging ring or fence each act was a perfection and a joy abandoned to her rapid fancies moods and the rich colored riot of her mind initiate of divine and mighty dreams magician builder of unnumbered forms exploring the measures of the rhythms of god at will she wore her wizard wonder dance the dionysian goddess of delight a bacchant of creative ecstasy this world of bliss he saw and felt its call but found no way to enter into its joy across the conscious gulf there was no bridge a darker air and circled still his soul tied to an image of unquiet life in spite of yearning mind and longing sense to a sad thought my gray experience formed and a vision dimmed my care and sorrow and sleep all this seemed only a bright desirable dream conceived in a longing distance by the heart of one who walks in the shadow of earth pain although he once had felt the eternal clasp too near to suffering world his nature lived and where he stood were entrances of night hardly too close beset by the world's care can the dense mold in which we have been made return sheer joy to joy pure light to light for its tormented will to think and live first to a mingled pain and pleasure woke and still it keeps the habit of its birth a dire duality is our way to be in the crude beginnings of this mortal world life was not nor mind's play nor heart's desire when earth was built in the unconscious void and nothing was save a material field identified with sea and sky and stone her young gods yearn for the release of souls asleep in objects vague in animate in that desolate grandeur in that beauty bare 
in the death stillness mid the unheeded sounds heavy was the uncommunicated load of godhead in a world that had no need for none was there to feel or to receive the solid mass which brooked no throb of sense could not contain their vast creative urge immersed no more in matter's harmony the spirit locked its statuesque repose in the uncaring trance it groped for sight fashioned for the movements of a conscious heart famishing for speech and thought and joy and love in the dumb insensitive wheeling day and night hungered for the beat of yearning and response the poised in conscience shaken with a touch the intuitive silence trembling with a name they cried to life to invade the senseless mold and in brute forms awake divinity a voice was heard on the mute rolling globe a murmur moaned in the unlistening void a being seemed to breathe where once was none something pent up in dead intention depths denied conscious existence lost to joy turned as if one asleep since dateless time aware of its own buried reality remembering its forgotten self and right it yearned to know to aspire to enjoy to live life heard the call and left her native light overflowing from her bright magnificent plain on the rigid coil and sprawl of mortal space here to the gracious great winged angel poured her splendor and her swiftness and her bliss hoping to fill a fair new world with joy as comes a goddess to a mortal's breast and fills his days with her celestial clasp she stooped to make her home in transient shapes in matter's womb she cast the mortal fire in the unfeeling vast woke thought and hope smote with her charm and beauty flesh and nerve and fought the light on earth's insensible frame alive and clad with trees and herbs and flowers earth's great brown body smiled towards the skies azure replied to azure in the sea's laugh new sentient creatures filled the unseen depths life glory and swiftness ran in the beauty of beasts man dared and thought and met with his soul the world but while the magic breath was on its way before our gifts could reach our present hearts the dark ambiguous presence questioned all the secret will that robed itself with night and offered to spirit the ordeal of the flesh imposed a mystic mask of death and pain in turn now in the slow and suffering years sojourns the winged and wonderful wayfarer and can no more recall her happier state but must obey the inert in conscience law insensible foundation of a world in which blind limits are on beauty laid and sorrow and joy as struggling comrades live 
a dim and dreadful muteness fell on her, abolished was her subtle mighty spirit, and slain her boon of child god happiness, and all her glory into littleness turned, and all her sweetness into a maimed desire. To feed death with her works is your life doom. So veiled was her immortality that she seemed inflicting consciousness on unconscious things, an episode in an eternal death, a myth of being that must forever cease. Such was the evil mystery of her change.